After a week of game announcements and trailers, the clear winner was Starfield. Starfield Direct might be one of the greatest game presentations of all time, or it could be one of the greatest setups to be picked apart. And one of the great things about having a fully dynamic game engine is, all of this just works. All of this just works. All of this just works. Just works. Works. But Todd Howard recently came out to talk about Starfield, give a little more information behind it. And that's where he answered some questions about the year long delay, 30 FPS lock. Will it be another eight years between Bethesda RPGs? Because we're still waiting on any form of information about Elder Scrolls 6. So let's dive into the information and kind of look between the lines when it comes to whatever Todd Howard says, because you know, he's not exactly the most truthful person. All of this just works. But damn, it, are his games good. If at any point you find yourself enjoying the video, make sure you tap that like button. It's the best way to help out the video and channel within that all famous YouTube algorithm. And if you're part of the 59% of people who are not subscribed to the channel, well, you know what to do then. So let's get right into those details. Todd Howard talks about what did the extra year of development time do for this game. And he talks about how they did a lot of balanced updates, a lot of bug fixing performance, and a lot of play testing, which is what you want to hear when it comes to an extra year of development time when it comes to a delay. If you're trying to rush in extra features and things like that, it's just gonna be kind of just thrown in haphazardly and come into a major situation where you'll probably not actually have it work and be super buggy and quite a fail of a feature. Especially as Xbox is building up Starfield to be their big game this year, you need to make sure that it runs properly. But seeing the release date first announced for November 2022, then delayed to the first half of 2023, and then just full on just delayed until September 6th, of 2023. It's a little bit concerning as a player because whenever I see this moving date when it comes to release, it makes you wonder, does the management fully understand when this game is actually going to be complete? Or are they just trying their best to get this game out the door? Because the online gaming community here as a whole, we're just so burned by all the modern gaming releases. And a big part of that modern gaming stigma comes from Bethesda and their games having buggy launches. Todd Howard even recognized this. I read on the internet that our games have had a few bugs. <laughs> I did, I read it on the internet, so it's true. And that uh, sometimes it doesn't just work. And the last time I saw Microsoft hype up a game this much was Halo Infinite and well, we all know how that game launched. Now the big topic that's been going around the internet has been the 30 FPS lock on console, which I feel like 60 FPS 1080p gaming is still a gold standard that even consoles are struggling to do. Especially as someone like me who plays on PC, I hear 30 frames per second, I go, Ugh. Though that 30 frames per second is also happening at 4K resolution on the Xbox Series X and 1440p on the Series S. And Todd Howard explains that they wanted to maintain a high fidelity with the game that also brings consistency and the best consistency they could get is at 30 frames. He even said that the game often does go above 30 even up to 60 but obviously if you can't consistently get 60 frames per second yeah just lock it at 30. Though for a game like Starfield I feel like it gets a little bit of a pass just because Bethesda is not really known for like their high action moments like say like a Doom or like a Halo or any kind of first person multiplayer shooter kind of game. You need 60 frames to keep that smoothness so that you can actually track targets properly. When it comes to just like a single player RPG game and Bethesda is really mainly known for like their kind of more intimate battles like we've seen like with Skyrim and Fallout. You're not taking on like 20 enemies at the time. You're taking two, maybe three, four, maybe like at the most kind of stuff at one time. So it's not crazy hectic. So you can get away with 30 frames. So when people hear high fidelity, they just instantly think graphics and they go, well, just dumb down the graphics or lower the resolution and you'd be able to run at 60 frames just fine. That might not be the case, especially for so much of this game is gonna be procedurally generated, especially with all these planets, the 1000 planets, which we'll go into later in this video. That simulation takes a lot of processing power, which really takes a hit when it comes to your frame rate. Even within the Starfield Direct, they talked about the sandwich thief, right? And Every time you take a ship, you take one of their sandwiches and kind of keep that. Well, that's object permanence, which is very taxing on a system. You know, oftentimes with a game, you'll just drop something and then like 30 seconds later, it'll just kind of fade away magically. And I'm sure there are other interconnected systems that don't directly tie in the graphics, which are very taxing to whatever the console has to offer for hardware wise. 
So that's why they had to kind of lower the frame rate down to 30 and just like lowering the graphics or having a quality setting won't exactly solve the issue. This concern is definitely hitting hard, especially after the last Bethesda game, Redfall, that came out that came out saying that it was locked at 30 frames on the console. And that just hearing that again, just like a month later, is just triggering like PTSD moments for modern gaming. But the thing about Redfall, it is a much smaller scale of a game. It's also just less graphically intense and the population within the world is much lower than what we're looking at when it comes to Starfield. Basically what I'm saying is that Redfall wasn't really set up to succeed. Me as a PC player though, I'm still hoping to get that 60 frames, but I'm worried that these 30 frames are more indicative on just like the general performance and stability of the game rather than just like having to play with pretty graphics. Could the 30 frames like be more indicative of underlying systems that really are out of a player's control when it comes to customization to be able to run the game how they want? And looking at the Steam requirements, a 2080 is required for recommended specs when it comes to playing this game on PC, which that's a pretty high standard. I'm just hoping this game can run on multiple systems, but the last time I saw a game need this type of requirement was actually Halo Infinite's PC requirements for the campaign side of things. Which playing the Halo Infinite campaign multiple times over, I can get 60 frames, but oftentimes I will actually dip below that as well, running at like 1080p medium to low settings. And that's on a 3080 graphics card. But at the moment, all we can do is cross our fingers and hope that we're not victims of modern gaming. We get some more detailed information about the procedural generation versus the handcrafted situations when it comes to playing Starfield and the 1,000 plants that you can explore. Todd Howard does state that the landscapes are mainly procedural, especially when it comes to the plants that you will go out and explore, but there are more handcrafted experiences than ever before within a Bethesda game. Specifically mentioned the dialogue, just it's more than Skyrim and Fallout 4 combined. So when it comes to the concern of, is it just like a computer generating everything for your experience? or are the developers actually, you know, meticulously creating something really special? Well, I think we're getting both. My assumption is that a lot of the mainline story stuff, you'll definitely have much more handcrafted kind of situations, where if you're doing more side mission kind of things, traveling to some random planet that doesn't really need to be traveled to, most likely that would be procedurally generated. We saw this happen with No Man's Sky where they tried that. In some situations, it worked out all right, but a lot of times it kind of left it like open, barren areas that weren't really that interesting. Though Bethesda is a Bethesda and they have a large budget behind them backing them up to hopefully put more development time into that procedural generation to make it much more of an interesting experience when you're traveling to these unknown areas. I will say that I really enjoy the emphasis on exploration that Starfield Direct actually brought to us all. A big part about the sci-fi genre is going to lands you've never been to before. Exploration is key when it comes to the genre. So I do feel like we will spend a lot of time on these fetch and retrieve kind of mission kind of things, which are pretty standard for a lot of the filler stuff when it comes to RPG games. Though it's going to be really important on Bethesda of how they make Starfield interesting when it comes to these mundane kind of missions. Within those procedurally generated planets, can they also have like enemies drop a ship where like you'll just get bombarded by enemies or maybe when you're leaving just a planet like you're just like all right i mine that item let's go and then you get attacked by an enemy ship or something something kind of interesting to spice it up rather than just having a new environment to do the same task but this time the environment looks different to build upon the topic that todd howard brought up saying that starfield has more dialogue than skyrim and fallout 4 combined is that you're gonna be spending a lot of time then talking to npcs and well it seems like not a lot of the development time went into the facial animations for this game. Though Bethesda games have always had this issue as well. I think this might be a creation engine issue or something where when you're talking to NPCs, they kind of have like this deadpan look to them. They don't really like move a whole lot. Their eyes are just kind of like focused on you. There's not a whole lot of facial animations besides like the mouth where what the NPC is saying isn't exactly matching up with like a facial feature that you think that they would have with the type of inflection with the voice. Obviously with a game with the scale of Starfield that's very difficult to do and that again comes down to that kind of generated versus handcrafted moments. Though we did see within the Starfield Direct that like with that intro scene when you first wake up your character the facial animations looked fantastic but then when talking to NPCs you had that typical Bethesda kind of deadpan face when it comes to conversations. Man, what's wrong with your face? 
This is why I loved games like Mass Effect so much more than say like a Bethesda game because of how interactive the characters were. They made you feel like they were actual people rather than NPCs you were talking to. Of course now Bioware has the my face is tired meme that I don't think they'll ever be able to shake off. Now apparently id Software came in to help out with Starfield, but very specifically, Todd Howard mentions how id actually helped out a lot graphically with this game, specifically bringing up motion blur and trying to bring elements from id Tech engine over to the creation engine. My assumption is that once they decide to lock the game at 30 frames, like how do we have this to be a smooth experience? Because once you're panning left and right, it's gonna be looking like a slideshow and hopefully that motion blur will kind of blend the frames a little bit to make it look better than it actually is. As long as it doesn't look like Halo Reach motion blur, I think we'll be fine. One thing I was very interested in with a game the size of Starfield, right? There are so many things that could probably get brought up and cut and actually added in later on or things like that is the vision of the game. We see it so many times with modern gaming where the vision of the game is just so vague and not clearly defined that when the product finally gets released, it's not exactly what was promised or really what people had intended. This leads to systems within the game being haphazardly thrown together, kind of put together last minute, and you can tell with the quality of when that happens. And Todd Howard states, and let me emphasize it, that it's Todd Howard stating that the game stayed true to its original vision. And from the Starfield Direct that we were shown, it seems like that would make sense as if, if I were to make a RPG game in space, similar to say like Skyrim or Fallout, how would I do it? Well, it would be Starfield. And a really interesting quote from Todd about the vision of Starfield, saying that the more you give to Starfield, the more it gives back. When I hear that, I feel that he's talking about going to that extra step, taking that extra mission. But when you go on those extra missions, you're surprised by how well it played out or interesting story bit that you go and go like, okay, I'll do your little fetch quest mission. But it ends up being like a full on crazy situation, which if that's the case with Starfield, I mean, come on, that's amazing. And to round things off, Todd Howard talks about how he views the success of Starfield. Now, when you're talking to gaming media, you can't really say exact numbers, right? You can't be like, well, we're looking to sell 20 million copies or whatever kind of arbitrary number that the Bethesda team and Xbox have brought up to saying what actually equates to success because that's what really measures it. Like how much money did you put into the product? How much money did you get out of it? And he kind of like skirted that, but tried going the more fan sentiment way saying, he just wants to have the people enjoy the game. He wants community sentiment around Starfield to be overall a positive time. Don't get me wrong, though definitely will be people out there online trying to get those angry clicks of saying why Starfield is the worst game ever created. And if that's the situation, totally warranted. So we know that Xbox and Bethesda have an actual general measurement when it comes to success with this game. When it comes to dollar signs, obviously you can't really talk about that within an interview. And like, yeah, every game developer wants people to like their game. That's the idea of making it in the first place. But will Starfield be able to make the landing? We'll just have to wait and see.